and that is known as Jarvis March. So I'm going to share my screen with you as usual and uh, then we'll discuss this. So I'm sharing my screen with you now. So is my screen visible? So can you see this screen now, Jarvis March, all of you? So in the last session, we have gone through one algorithm that is known as convex hull for Graham scan, and, uh, and it is known as a Jarvis March. So basically in Jarvis March, we are building a sequence of points p0 p1 up to p h minus 1 of the vertices of the convex hull cube so we'll start with the p0 vertex then the next convex hull vertex p1 has the least polar angle with respect to p0 so with respect to p0 point we'll select the another point p1 which has the least polar angle with respect to a p0 point so in case of ties we choose the point farthest from P0. So the point which is farthest from the P0 point, the least with respect to P1 and so on. So one by one, we'll select one new point. And for that new particular point, we'll select a polar angle, which is least with respect to the previous point. So only our focus will be on the new point. So new point will be compared with respect to the previous point. So P2 has the least polar angle with respect to a P1 point. When we reach the highest vertex, say P of K, then it is known as we have constructed the right chain of the convex hull. We have constructed right chain of the convex hull. So to understand this thing, let us consider this diagram. Here we have this P0 point, the initial point, and with respect to P0, we are searching for the point having a least polar angle. We are searching for the point having a least polar angle. So that is the point P1 with respect to positive x-axis. Now, with respect to P1, we will again find out the point which is having a least polar angle. So here that point is a P2 point, as you can see in the diagram. Now for the P2 point, again, we'll find out a point which is having a least polar angle with respect to P2. So you can see that it is the P3 point. Now P3 point is the point which is having a highest point. If you consider X, Y coordinate, then the P3 having a highest Y coordinate. So it is known as the right chain will complete the construction of the right chain in this way right now to construct the left chain the other part of the convex hull to construct the another part of this convex hull we have to construct the left chain so now for that left chain we'll consider the another rule to construct the left chain we start at pk which is the highest point of the right chain and choose pk plus one point as the point with the least polar angle with respect to pk but from the negative x-axis now 
we'll calculate the polar angle with respect to negative x axis and we'll start from the last point of the right chain we'll start with the last point of the right chain and we'll construct a polar angle we'll calculate the polar angle with respect to negative x axis we continue on forming the breaking point to our original vertex p0 and we'll reach to the original vertex and that's how we'll get the complete convex arc so as you can see in this diagram that from the right chain the highest point is p3 now with respect to p3 we'll find out a polar angle with respect to negative x axis and we'll get the point as p4 as you can see that p4 having least polar angle with respect to p3 when we consider the negative x axis so we have the point p4 now from p4 point again we'll consider the polar angle with respect to negative x axis so that is the point p0 itself having a least polar angle and once we are getting this original point in this way it is the complete convex arc it is the complete convex arc so that is how we'll get the convex arc through construction of right chain and the left chain is this clear okay so now let us understand that how we are working in this algorithm so basically jarvis march computes the convex hull of a set q of points by a technique known as package wrapping or gift wrapping so normally when you have any gift box with you of irregular size what you will do you will start from one particular side you will put some cello tapes over there and you will pack it then you will go to another side you will pack it that's how you will gift wrap the box right so same way we are doing in the jarvis march we will start from one particular point we are finding the another point having a least polar angle with respect to positive x axis so we are completing one part of that gift pack then we'll go to another side of that gift packs and we are assuming it is a irregular size box so one by one we'll complete it so we are getting a complete gift wrap over the gift right so the same way we are working in this jarvis march algorithm and the running time of this algorithm is big of nh where n is the number of points in the set q and h is the number of vertices of the convex arc so here there is a difference right n is the total points of your convex arc and h is the number of vertices in the final solution it is the number of vertices in the final solution so basically when h is of order log n it is of order log n it is faster as compared to graham scan so normally when you put this value of h as log n it will become n log n it will become n log n so you may feel it is same as the graham scan which you have done in your previous lecture right so ideally you feel that it is n log n it is same as graham scan but because we are just calculating the polar angle of one point every time our focus will be on only one point and with respect to that we are calculating the polar angles and number of points on the final convex cell are always less they are always less so that's why asymptotically it is faster than the graham scan approach so now let us take one example and let us apply this algorithm one by one so that you can understand this flow yes those who are attending online do you have any query yes there is one query from priyank can you repeat the left chain okay so let us go to that let us take this example so things will be clear we'll go for left chain as well as right chain both in this example so it will clear your doubt priyank so now we'll start with the point 0 0 origin and we'll find a point which is having a least polar angle with respect to 0 0 so definitely we are getting a point p0 from that we are getting the new point 5 1 5,0 as the next point because it is having a least polar angle as you can see here so p0 to p1 that will be the first thing 
right this is zero with respect to p0 right also we can think in that way it is the farthest point if you consider the straight line so that's why we are connecting that to p0 with p1 so you can think in both the ways now with respect to p1 we will not touch p0 point so now with respect to p1 i have to find out the polar angles for all the remaining points so it is p2 p3 p4 p5 so when you consider these points you will find because 2 2 and 4 4 both having a same angle so we have to consider only the farthest point same way we have done in the graham scan algorithm right so we are not considering the point 2 2 in this entire process because 2 2 having a same as the 4 4 same angle so that will not touch so we will discard all such points in the beginning as we are doing in the graham scan right so now we just we are comparing the polar angle of p1 with all the other points so you can see it is compared with p3 then it is compared with p2 it is compared with p4 and it is compared with p5 right so we are comparing these points so which is having a least polar angle with respect to p1 it is p3 it is a point p3 so with respect to p1 the point p3 having a least polar angle the p3 having a least polar angle so that's why we'll select the point p3 as the next point so we are getting this point p3 now with respect to p3 because it is the new point which is added we have to find out the polar angle now we have to check is the p3 the highest point is the p3 the highest point having a highest y axis a y coordinate yes so it is the end of the right chain it is the end of the right chain this is what we have to understand right now we have to construct the left chain we have to construct the left chain so for left chain what we'll do we'll compare the polar angle with respect to negative x axis not with the positive x axis we'll compare the polar angle with respect to negative x axis so now we'll compare the polar angle of p3 with p5 with respect to negative x axis right it is a line segment p3 we can say we will compare the polar angle with respect to negative x axis similarly another is p3 p4 so we'll compare the with negative x axis we'll compare it with negative x axis so out of this two it is obvious that p5 having a less polar angle with respect to negative x axis so now we'll consider the p5 point in our solution clear now with respect to p5 again we have to find out the polar angle with negative x axis considering the point as p5 point so now with respect to negative x axis we will consider the polar angle so p0 and p4 two points are there p0 and p4 but now the p0 point having a least polar angle with respect to negative x axis right p0 having a least polar angle with respect to negative x axis so we will consider the p0 instead of p4 so now as a result we are getting this diagram once we are getting p0 point right we we'll stop the process yes now you have any question yes because in the earlier step 2 comma 2 and 4 comma 4 both have the same angle with respect to positive x axis so we have to consider the farthest point and we have to discard in the beginning right we have two points 2 comma 2 and 4 comma 4 but 2 comma 2 having a same angle with respect to positive x axis as the 4 comma 4 point so we have to consider the farthest point because we want to include all the points inside the polygon so that will be discarded in the beginning when you sort the points and all that because you have to do that thing anyway in the beginning Means P2 and P5 is the same line as P1. Like when we are going in a chain, right chain, yes, sir, when we calculate the other point, uh, sir, we cannot discard P2 because P2 and P5 are in the same line. Like when in the before, no, I showed. but what will happen that uh, P5 is in the other part, it is not in the left or right chain, while P2 is in the right chain. 
right? When you consider this uh, convex hull, right? Sir, but we wouldn't know, right? When the like when we were when we are computing for P one, yes. We wouldn't know that when the right angle angle. No, that we can know from the beginning itself. Yeah, because uh, because we know the highest y coordinate. We know the highest y coordinate. So we know that this point is not passing from this P zero to P three line. It is on the other side of P P zero to P three line. Right here, there is one query from the the students that uh, if p2 and p5 having a same angle with respect to p1 point why we are considering both the points because when you consider the p3 point right so point p0 p3 is the right chain it is the right chain it is the right side of the convex arc and the point p5 it is on the left chain in the left chain of the convex arc so that's why we are considering both the points separately right because if you remove that point uh, p2 right Later on, it may happen that that P two here the angle of P three such that you are considering that, but it may happen that that angle of P two is such that you have to consider as a part of your final answer. So we have to consider in that way. We'll take one more example. Yes. So is the left chain clear? Yes. Those attending online, is the left chain clear now? right we are considering the angle with respect to negative x axis when we are considering the left chain we are considering a angle with respect to negative x axis when we are considering the left chain so now let us proceed let us take one more example so now here we will consider the point 20 Comma zero. So here you can see that this twenty comma zero. So it is your y-axis, right? Right. And x-axis is your zero comma thirty. Or no, no. What is zero comma thirty? Is your y-axis? Yes. So you are here, all of you. And twenty comma zero. It is your x-axis, right? So we'll start from which point? We we'll start with twenty comma zero, right? So that is the first point, and with respect to that point, with respect to that point, the point which is fifty comma ten, having a least polar angle with respect positive x-axis, it is the point having a least polar angle with respect to positive x-axis. So that's why we'll consider the point fifty comma ten. Now. when we proceed from this point 50 comma 10 again we have to calculate the angle with respect to other points so we'll find the point 70 comma 30 the point 70 comma 30 having a least polar angle with respect to 50 comma 10 right so that's why we'll consider the next point as 70 comma 30 right so it is not the closest point it is just the point which is having a least polar angle with respect to the previous point now from 70 comma 30 from 70 comma 30 again we have to consider the point which is having a least polar angle so which option will be there either 50 comma 40 or 30 comma 60 so which one will be considered 30 comma 60 so that's how we'll make the point 30 comma 60 okay now it is the point having a highest y coordinate it is a point with highest y coordinate so it is the end of the right chain now we'll construct the left chain right so now with respect to this point we'll consider angle of this point 30 comma 60 with negative x axis because we want to construct a left chain now we want to construct a left chain now so the point will be Which one? Zero comma thirty. Yes, so we'll consider this point zero comma thirty with respect to negative x-axis because we have two candidates. One is zero comma thirty and fifteen comma twenty-five. We have only two such points, right? Zero comma thirty and fifteen comma twenty-five. So once you are considering this left chain, right? Any point which is on the right side, right? 
it is in the right chain path you don't have to consider because it is of no use now because you already find a line from 20 comma 0 to 30 comma 60 which is the one part of the convex arc that is the right part so no point in that area will be considered after that right any coordinate which is falling in that area will not be considered which is on the right side that is from 20 comma 0 to 30 comma 60 right otherwise it will not be a convex polygon any query so here we have a very less number of points that's why we are getting this kind of thing but even if you have like any number of points that I, I thought of it first from the right, I mean, just this case, but sir, it is happening such that the leftmost point will always have the highest number of high, uh, lowest uh, angles. Because if you look at uh, five, then it goes from minus to uh, zero to minus five. So, sir, like the leftmost will be the lowest because minus five is always greater than zero, less than zero. So the leftmost point will always be considered. So that is so that is better because yes, so that is better, right? We are considering the lowest angle. Yes, we have to consider least angle. Yes, so but when you will be not large because we are considering from the negative part, right? So that's what we are doing. If you consider with respect to positive x axis, that angle will be much more larger for all the points. Like a positive axis, x axis will have like zero to five and zero to minus five, and get it. If, if it is in the uh, first quadrant and the second quadrant, then the angle will be worse because uh, it is minus. Right? Any point? In this case also, if you take it in this case or in the case above that, then it will always work. Now, it will always work. let us see what will happen. That Let us start from 20, 0. Right? Let us start from 20, 0. And if there is a point in the fourth quadrant, right? Then which point will be considered first? Then we are considering fourth quadrant. Uh, in terms of the point 20 comma 0 so it will be 0 comma 0 comma 30 will be in the second quadrant like when we are considering a point we are considering the quadrant now uh, as per which point yeah, we are on yes because we are considering the angle on from that point yes so that's what i'm telling you 20 comma 0 is there let us start from that first, first quadrant. okay now at that first time quadrant. what will happen that if there is one point because you have to consider the angle with all the points all the remaining points so now, if there is a point, so we cannot consider negative angle. Definitely. Because then it will go down. Yes, it will go in a totally different direction. It will mesh up all the lines. So we, we cannot consider negative angle. Yes, yes. Right. Otherwise, that will happen. I hope you got my point. Right. That's why we are doing in that way. Is the point clear? Right. If we are having a twenty comma zero the point, and if you have another point in both quadrant. Right? Because if you consider 20, 0 as origin and we have on the fourth quadrant having both the negative values. So that angle will be much more lesser than 50, 10 angle. So in that way, what will happen that you have to start, you have to connect 20, 0 to that point which is in the fourth end. Now again with respect to that point, when you consider all the points, it will create, it will not maintain that direction. Sometimes it will go into, it is not going in this counterclockwise flow. Point because that is the lowest point. Because we are already considering the leftmost and the bottommost point as the starting point. Yes. So that will not happen because we are already considering the point in the fourth quadrant as the P0. Okay, if you do that origin shift, right? To that because point. We have to we have to consider the leftmost and the bottommost point. Right. So we will have to take the fourth quadrant point only in account as a P0 point. And then only we can do 
So then we don't have to shift axis and like algorithm will be way more easier. So that modification can be done that if you shift the origin to that point, so everything will be in the first quadrant after that, first or second. That's what you're doing right now. Right? 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 That's what we are doing here. So we are considering 20, comma zero as the first point. That means what we are considering everything as a origin 20, comma zero. Yes, right? Because origin should be there. So if you think about a general Generalized case. This is what we are considering in that way. But if you take a generalized case, then it will create a problem, right? If you start from a zero zero point, and then if you want to construct a convex hull, right? Then it will create a problem because here there is no such line that we have to consider the point which is the lowest coordinate. We are doing in that way, but there is no such algorithm step in this. You can see. Go to slide. Let us go to slide number two. We we'll start with a p zero point. P zero can be any point. Here it is not mentioned. As we are doing in the convex cell. In convex cell, we are explicitly mentioning that. Select a point which is the having the lowest y coordinate and closest to origin. Here, there is no such rule. You can start this algorithm from any point. You can start this algorithm from any point. So, that is the main difference. That's why we are working in that way. If you want to do that, definitely you can change your rule, and you, there is no need of left and right chain and no need to calculate. With negative x axis, but here there is no such construction, right? If you add that constraint, you can do that, but you have to add that constraint that select the point which is the as an origin which is having a lowest y coordinate and closest to 0, 0. If you add that constraint, that additional thing, additional computation you have to do here in Jarvis March, there is no such rule. You can start from any random point and you can apply this algorithm. Right. So I think now it is clear why we are doing in this way. Left and right chain, because you can start from any point. You can start with any point and you can apply this algorithm. So now we have one more approach for which we have overview to construct the convex hull. So I think those attending online, it is clear that here there is a main difference between this. Graham scan and Jarvis March in Graham's y coordinate, while in Jarvis March, you can start from any point, right? You can start from any point and then you have to work, right? So we rule out 2, 2. So what if we choose 2, 2 in the starting? Because we don't know, we are not calculated anything. Federal out when you get 4, 4. Right? When you get 4, 4, we can automatic. Right? You can just do one pro simple facility. So if you start from 2, you go to 4, 4 and it will complete the quicksand. And then you can discard two comma two. Sir, sorry to interrupt. Okay, so now uh, let us go sir, to your voice is approach. breaking, sir. That is convex cell using divide console. Then is very big to solve the problem. The first step is definitely at the points into two halves. Yes, sir. Find the convex cell of each subset. And then we have to combine the two convex cells to generate the overall final convex cell. So now it is very interesting. So we have to make sure that do that our two convex cells, which we are mining, should not overlap each other. Overlap. If to, we are dividing the points in such a way that two convex cells will overlap with each other, then you cannot combine it. So now to ensure that all the points are pre-sorted from left to right, we have to pre-sort all the points from left to right. So we have a left and right half and hence a left and right convex half. Why it is essential? Because otherwise what will happen? If you don't do this pre-sorting, then it will generate two overlapping convex half, which you cannot merge. You require two independent convex half, which you can merge together. We have to define a bridge 
is any line segment joining a vertex on the left and a vertex on the right that does not cross the side of either polygon. So we'll see this is very important that how to construct these bridges, right? So define a bridge as any line segment joining a left, uh, joining a vertex on the left and a vertex on the right that does not cross the side of either polygon. And we need upper and lower bridges. Now, we'll see the procedure to construct the upper bridge. So now to understand that, let us consider this diagram first. We have two convex cell, then we'll go through the steps. We have two convex cells already given. One is on the left-hand side and another is on the right-hand side. Now we want to find a upper bridge. We want to find an upper bridge. So what we'll do, we'll select, I'm selecting one such point. And similarly, I'm selecting another point on the, in the right convex cell. Is it clear? We are selecting two points and we are joining with a line segment. I hope you can see that two points. Is it clear? Right, these are the two such points. One is uh, from the left convex cell, another is from the right convex cell. We are selecting two such points. Because normal left chain is not a complete polygon. Here, these are the two separate convex cell in itself. Right? Left chain is something a set of line segments, half of the convex cell. Here, both are complete convex cells. Right? And just we want to find a new convex cell which will merge the two. So we are selecting one point from the left convex cell. We are selecting one point from the right convex cell. And they are connected by a line segment. Now we'll fix the left point. We'll fix the left point and we'll select another point from the right convex cell by increasing the angle, by increasing the angle. Right? So you can see in the right side, we are selecting the second point, which is given by a dotted line, which is given by the dotted line. Left point is fixed. Left point is fixed. And we are increasing the angle of the line segment. And we are selecting another point from the right convex cell. So we are getting the second point. Now, further we can see, can you further increase the angle and we'll get another point from the right convex cell such that that line segment should not pass through that convex cell. That is the criteria. It should not cross the convex cell. Is it clear? So that is how we are getting the third point and which is shown by the complete line. It is shown by the complete line. Now, once we are completing that part, we are still not sure it is the upper bridge or not. It is upper bridge or not. So now, because now further movement for this point is not possible, we'll select another point from the left convex cell. We'll select another point from the left convex cell. Is it clear? And we'll compare it, do the comparison with the points on the, which are on the right convex cell. So now let us see in this second diagram. We are selecting another point from the left convex cell. We are selecting another point from the left convex cell. Right? And we'll start the comparison with the points on the right convex cell, one by one. Right? No need to compare the previous points. No need to compare the previous points. So now we'll start with this point and we'll compare with the points on the, which are on the right side of the convex cell, in the right convex cell. Right? So now again here, what we have to do? We have to change the angle. So you can see that one more point is possible, which you can consider. Can you see the difference between the two? Right? First, we have considered the left point, any one point from the left convex cell. Clear? And we are increasing the angle. And we are getting three possibilities. We are getting three possibilities for that point. And we are getting the point having the highest possible angle. Now, if I select any another point, you can see it will cross the right convex cell. So no another point is possible. No another point is possible because we want to construct the upper bridge. We want to construct the upper bridge. 
clear if you select any point in the right convex cell now other than this to construct the upper bit it will pass through the convex cell so no further increase is possible so now we are changing the point in the left convex cell right side of the left convex cell so that's what we are doing that's what we are doing here we are changing the point in the left convex cell which is on the right side right we are selecting a point from the right side from the of the left convex cell clear and further will increase the angle how long that will get the best match so that's what you can see that we have increased that angle so now further no increment is possible no further increment is possible so that is the upper bridge that is known as the upper bridge can you see how we got the upper bridge right it is just a concept so don't worry about implementation all that because we cannot implement all the algorithms but you should know that through divide and conquer also you can find a convex cell through jarvis mart you can get a convex cell through graham scan you can get a convex cell so there are many techniques right for to solve a problem and that depends on the different persons how they have invented that method it's a new novel technique it is a new algorithm right so that's why we are considering this different approach so let us see that if you want to describe this we can describe in this way start with any bridge the bridge means any line segment bridge is any line segment which will connect left convex cell with the right convex cell start with any bridge a bridge is guaranteed if you join the rightmost vertex on the left to the leftmost vertex on the right how we can construct the bridge join the leftmost vertex of the right the rightmost vertex of the left and we'll get the bridge keeping the left end of the bridge fixed we are keeping this left end of the bridge fixed see if the right end can be raised can you increase the right end that's what we are doing look at the next vertex on the bridge look at the next vertex on the right polygon going a clockwise direction we are going in a clockwise direction and see whether that would be a better bridge right we are just checking that is it a better bridge if it is a better bridge we have to consider that otherwise see if the left hand can be raised while the right hand remains fixed so after that what we are doing we are keeping the right hand fixed and we are raising the left hand so same thing we have done in this diagram clear yeah? same thing we have done in this diagram first we are keeping the left hand fixed and we are raising the right hand once no more raise is possible we are raising the left hand and we are keeping the right hand fixed now further no more raise is possible we are doing the reverse thing we are raising the right hand right and we are getting this line now no further raise is possible so it is the upper bridge and similarly if you do the reverse thing right if you can do the reverse thing what will get a lower bridge so now let us represent that with the help of a diagram we'll start with any one bridge we'll start with any one bridge and we'll change the angle right we'll change the angle so we are keeping the left hand fixed and we are finding a point for the right side so we are finding a new angle right so we are getting the new point once you cannot get new point in the right side we'll keep the right hand fixed and we'll decrease the left hand in the previous case upper bridge we are raising it here we are decreasing it so we are keeping the right hand fixed and we are decreasing the left hand right so as a result we are getting this now no further decrease is possible no further decrease is possible in the left side as well as right side clear so this will be the lower bridge so once you are getting this lower bridge we are getting this a new convex cell we are getting this new convex cell clear and you can see which points are removed which where you can see compared right the point which we have compared we have removed it 
you can see that right because the bridges which are not proper bridges upper bridge as well as lower bridge that cannot be used as upper bridge or lower bridge that points are discarded right so you discarded that points so you can see one point on the left side and three points on the right side we'll discard that points clear so this is one convex hull if there is another convex hull like this again you can apply divide and conquer this convex hull will be your left part another similar convex hull will be your right part and you can again apply the same technique right so you can start with a uh, three points three points on the left side three points on the right side they are two separate convex hull and from that you will get a new convex hull again you will apply divide and conquer you will combine it and you will get a convex hull of higher sizes so i hope it is clear how we are doing this now we need to determine the running time of this algorithm the key is to perform a step 2 in yes selection of the right bridge right upper bridge and lower bridge for this it is sufficient that each vertex is a pointer to the next vertex going clockwise and going counter clockwise because we require both the directions hence the choice of data structure is a doubly linked circular list right is a doubly linked list which is a circular list so doubly circular linked list and if you consider the overall running time of this algorithm then it will be n log n right it will be n log n so definitely this particular portion is taken from a book which is also a book on data structure and algorithm so they have discussed in detail data structures and all that for this algorithm as well but our goal is just to know the technique so we are not going into that detail that how we can use the linked list to implement this right so now our master theorem and other things in the previous semester right you might have gone through a recurrence tree method yes or no yes. right through recurrence tree method we can find out for divide and conquer technique the running time of the algorithm right so same thing we have done here the pre processing time because we have to sort the points so that they will not create overlapping convex hull so it is order of n log n time right we have to pre process we have to sort the points so at some points will be in the left part some will be in the right part so we don't have overlapping convex hull then divide the set of points into two halves set a and set b so we have n upon two points in set a we have similar leaf sets then recursively we will compute the convex hull for set a it is a recursive thing so the time will be t of n by 2 the time to compute the convex hull of n upon two points similarly so that is the running time of two individual parts right and then to merge these two convex hull that is upper bridge and lower bridge right for that time is order of n the time is order of n because just we have to do few comparisons you can see right because just we have to raise the bridge or you have to lower the bridge so we have to compare one point with some two points so time will be order of n why it is order of n can you tell because one point can be compared maximum with order. all the points on the other side right so that's why it is order of n at most so if you represent the recurrence it is t of n is equal to 2 t of n by 2 plus cn so time for divide and time for merge right 2 times t of n by 2 plus c of n that is for merging or getting the bridge so if you solve this recurrence the time will be n log n so if you apply the recurrence tree method 
right? We can represent like this. We have two sub problems here. Right, and for that, we have two t of n by two, and the time for this. Right, we have size of each sub problems. So just yeah, there is some. We have two is indicating number of sub problems, and size of the sub problem is also there. It is t two, and this work dividing and combining. Right, so now it is clear. So. If you apply recurrence tree method, let us merge short. That time will be n log n. But if you construct the recurrence tree, it will be like this: it into two parts, so t n by two, and t n by two, and d of n, c or d. You can take any constant. Okay, so t two t n by two plus d n. Now further we'll divide this t of n by two. Further we'll divide this t n by two, so that will give us t n by four and t n by four. And instead of n, we have d n by two. Right? Instead of n, we'll write d n by two. I think this is known to you. You have studied this in your previous semester. Yes. So I think we can go fast, right? You can understand this thing very well. Similarly, we'll further divide this until we we'll reach to one node only. We have total n elements in the convex cell, so total we have n leaves, individual elements, and the height of the tree. That is log n that we know, and the cost of each level. You can see the cost is same. Then again, d n because four d n by between d n, right? So total n log n. If you multiply this cost with height, yeah, so it is obvious, right? N times log n, right? Here it is n times log n. The cost of each level is n. D is constant. It does not make any difference. N. n times log n clear yeah? so through divide and conquer and through recurrence tree method we can say the time complexity of this convex cell is n log n right so you can see that what is the difference for gram scan it is n log n because sorting is the most dominating part For Jarvis march again it is n log n. For dividers is the Jarvis march. The fastest algorithm is the Jarvis march. Right? As as it is mentioned, asymptotically lower as compared to others. Otherwise, all are n log n. Right? All are n log n. But that constant factor is less. So that's why we are writing that Jarvis march is asymptotically faster than Graham scan. Clear? So I hope this is clear what we discussed today. Okay, now regarding your first internal paper, a few points which I want to. Tell that uh, the in your case there was no MCQ. It was in the image processing. Okay, in your case the first question was uh, find a hash value of three two four two five or some number was there, right? I think three two four two five was there. And using Rabin car. So what was your approach? That in Rabin car algorithm we have one for loop to find a Hash value of a given pattern, right? It is a step-by-step -step procedure that you have to multiply d raised to m minus one with the first digit. P is equal to d p plus something. 
right so you have to apply that individual steps you have to apply that individual steps clear and if you apply you will get full yeah. algorithm so in that you have to write two things that you have to initialize all the of alphabet to the length of the pattern and that is m and then for some entries which are in the actual pattern you so pet and for all the length of the pattern will be the size all the other characters if you write completely you will get two out of two the third question was any applications of string matching so if you mention different applications right then you will get two out of two because in some papers what i found that searching in the word file searching in the pdf file so they are not different applications right searching on a web page so it is only one thing definitely all the string matching algorithms are for searching but at least you should mention different applications like we have discussed in the class that for virus detection how you can use a string matching so it is a different criteria can you write password yes password is a different thing password matching is a different thing so depending on varieties of application you will get two out of two not for this searching pdf word and web page three are not that thing right they are only one so i am ending this session and remaining long questions were very straightforward so i think no need to discuss right thank you all